Hello and welcome to Ben's Addictions. Today's topic is super important. It's all about jump starting. Can jump starting your Mercedes damage the electrical components of your Mercedes? If yes, why? And what are the best methods of jump starting your Mercedes with minimum risk of damaging the electrical components? And what should be absolutely avoided when jump starting your Mercedes? So stay tuned. If the voltage of your uh, Mercedes battery drops under 12 volts, you will not have enough cranking power to start your car, depending on the situation. This might happen because your battery gets old or if you leave some of the consumers of your uh, car for extended period of time without the battery getting enough charge. Okay, now to answer the question, if you can damage the electrical components of your car when jump starting your car, the short answer is yes. The first reason is the power surge. Jump starting a car can cause a sudden surge of electrical power, which may exceed the capacity of certain components, leading to failure. The second reason why you could damage the electrical components of your car is incorrect polarity. If the jumper cables are connected incorrectly, such as reversing the positive and negative terminals, it can cause damage to the electrical system. And the third reason is the pre-existing issues. If there were pre-existing electrical issues in the car, jump starting it could exacerbate those problems and cause failure. Jump starting a Mercedes is riskier than any other car. And the reason is Mercedes has more computers than any other cars. Comparing, uh, for example, this CLK 500 to a 2004 Toyota Camry, this CLK has at least 15 computers comparing to a Toyota Camry with only two or three computers. So the risk of damaging one of those expensive components is much higher than let's say a Toyota Camry. The older your Mercedes is and the more computer it has, the risk of damaging your car will be more. For example, the risk of damaging the top hydraulic computer on this SL class is much more than any other Mercedes because experience shows that this Mercedes doesn't like jump starting using a traditional jump start cable. So there are basically four methods of jump starting or starting your car when your battery fails to start your engine. First method is by buying a new battery and installing that and that's always not possible, especially when you're stranded in the middle of nowhere. The second method is using a charger or trickle charger to charge up your old dead battery and there is a problem with that. First you might not have access to a charger or a power point. And second, a charger usually takes a long time to charge up a dead battery. The third method is using a high quality portable jump starter. These days, these jump starters are so advanced in technology and they are designed to produce constant amount of power to quickly and efficiently crank the engine to avoid a power surge and consequently, they can safely start your car. By using a high quality jump starter, you actually eliminate the risk of electrical damage to the donor car and you also do not need to carry a jump start cable and you also do not need a running car to jump start your car. The fourth method that usually comes to mind is using a jump start cable and a running car. The problem with the fourth method, which is using a jump start cable and a running car, is that you might make that mistake of wrong polarity or a power surge that could result in damaging the electrical components of your Mercedes. The other disadvantage of using a jump starter is you need to carry the cables and also you need to have access to a running car. Another problem with this method is that you might end up damaging the electrical components to two cars actually and not one. So what is the best method? If your battery is more than four and five years old and the indicator on the battery 
is showing white. In this case, you better to replace your battery and that's the best method to safely start your car again without damaging the very expensive components of your Mercedes. But it's not always possible to buy a battery, especially when you are in the middle of nowhere. The second best method is using a charger, a good trickle charger to charge up your car if you have enough time to do so. The problem with this method is it might take 8 to 10 hours for you to be able to fully charge your battery and to be able to start your engine again. If you do not have access to the first and second method, you cannot go wrong with the third method. These are packed with technology, even reversing the polarity, you might not end up damaging your car. So what method is the worst method of starting your car? Well, using a jump starter and a running car. Because first of all, you might make mistakes and incorrect polarity might damage both of your cars. And second, using a running car to jump start a second car increases the risk of one of the car's electrical components to get damaged. Jump start cable should be avoided if you have access to one of those three methods of starting your engine. Now, what is the correct method of jump starting your car using a jump start cable? Well, first of all, you need to make sure that the ignition of both cars are off. Second, you always need to attach the positive cable to the dead battery. And to do so on this CLK 500, for example, W209, the port is already here. So you never need to attach your positive cable to the battery because this is already in place for you to connect your positive. And then you need to make sure that the other end of the jump cable is not touching each other. When you attach the positive to the jump start point, you can go to the second car and attach the positive point to that car too. Third step is attaching the negative cable to the running car, which is actually the engine is off on that car. Finally, you want to carefully attach the last cable, which is the negative one, to the negative point. And on this car, which is a CLK 500 W209, you need to avoid attaching this cable to the negative of the battery because when you attach the final cable, it produces spark. And that spark is dangerous because even the dead battery is prone to emit hydrogen, which is flammable. So you need to attach the final and the fourth cable, which is negative, to as far as possible to the battery terminal and as far as possible to the fuel lines. So in this case, you might want to attach the fourth negative cable to this bare metal, which is the farthest way to the battery. And it actually seems to be a good conductor. Also, after attaching all four ends of the cable, make sure the cables are not touching the serpentine belt or all the other moving parts. And you need to make sure that the last cable is get attached properly to the ground, not producing spark or not being loose. Finally, when you attach all four cables, you might want to proceed to the running car and start the engine. And then you need to wait for the dead battery to get at least 15 minutes of charge before trying to start your car. And this actually eliminates the amount of surge to you, the computers of your car. And finally, after half an hour or more, you can proceed to the dead car. And then you can start your engine. After you start your car, go ahead and disconnect the negative first and then disconnect the negative side on your running car and then disconnect the positive on your running car and finally disconnect the positive on your 
dead car. Also make sure that you do not shut off your engine for half an hour on your dead car. It is also important to note that Mercedes has used many different locations to hide the battery. For example, on this R129, the battery is located in the boot or trunk on the right hand side. And accessing it is easier. On this CLK class W209, for example, the battery is located underneath the cabin filter on the left hand side because this car is an Australian version and it's a right hand side drive. Also, it is possible for a car like R class to have the battery underneath the driver's side seat. And also, on some of the older cars, the battery is located underneath the rear seat or behind the compartment area behind the driver or passenger seat. There is also a way to avoid as much as possible a dead battery. First of all, you need to check the condition of your battery time to time. Every two, three months, if your battery is old enough, make sure that the voltage is more than 12.5 after 30 minutes of shutting off the engine. Also make sure that your battery terminals and all the other connections are nice and clean. And if not, use a very mild sandpaper to clean up the battery terminals. Also, you need to make sure that you are not using your battery more than five or six years because it's really a false economy and most of the fault codes can pop up due to a weak or old battery. For example, ABS is very prone to drop a code if you use a weak or old battery that is not functioning in a proper way. If your car travels only short distances, make sure for every two weeks you charge up your battery using a trickle charger. If you are traveling or your car is only a weekend warrior, make sure you connect your trickle charger to the battery so you can always have the battery charged up and in this way you can also save on buying batteries every two years because keeping your battery charged actually reduces the interval of, of a battery going dead prematurely. So a good charging system should provide more than 14 volts and by using a multimeter you can test your charging system of your car making sure that your battery gets charged up properly with the alternator. Okay guys, as usual, thank you so much for watching, liking, subscribing, leaving your feedback. Enjoy your Mercedes, stay safe and have a great day.